Joining us now is Middle East expert, Dr. Elizabeth Kendall, head of uh, Girton College at Cambridge University. Thank you for joining. The Houthis are now threatening the U.S., we hear, with repercussions after a U.S. strike killed 10 rebels in the Red Sea when they attempted to take over a ship. Should they be taken seriously? The Houthis are no strangers to making belligerent statements. They make them all the time. That does not mean that they are actually keen on an all-out war. So... Yes, they're a serious adversary and they will no doubt continue and persist in their efforts to disrupt as much as possible. But on this particular attack and the resultant sinking of three of their boats, it may be that they miscalculated. They've been testing the US's red lines since the middle of October. Well, now they found them. It wouldn't make logical sense for them at the moment to spark a massive retaliation on the part of the US and now potentially from allies like the UK, because they are on the cusp of receiving political recognition inside Yemen. There was an agreement for a UN mediated roadmap just before Christmas. And so that would actually give them political authority that's internationally recognized. However, I should add that there are some unpredictable factors here. One of them is that the Houthis do genuinely appear to believe that God is on their side. And if you cast aside military logic and start to inject emotion and religious belief, then really anything could happen. Now, uh, there are about $1 trillion in annual goods traversing the Suez Canal and through the Red Sea. Egypt relies on revenues from the canal. Even China stands to lose from increased shipping costs. This could surely impact world trade if these threats end, uh, keep going. What, what is your take on this? Yes, I think the threat to world trade has definitely focused international attention on what might have looked previously like a faraway conflict, whether that conflict is the one happening in Gaza or the ongoing civil war in Yemen. Suddenly, the realities of destabilization in the Middle East are brought home to Western powers because of the disruption to a trade route that through which about 17,000 ships pass every year, the Red Sea. So that certainly focuses attention. And that's why we may well see countries like the UK act alongside the US in taking a harder line against uh, the malign activities of Iran in the region, one of which is the Houthi rebels and what they're doing in the Red Sea. So we're hearing the US, we're hearing about Britain, perhaps other European countries. Should Israel take part in this as well? Is this another front for Israel? I think Israel has plenty to deal with right on its doorstep. This would be much more of an international effort to safeguard trade routes. And perhaps it's more useful for the international community to disentangle what's happening in the Red Sea from what's happening in Gaza. Certainly, it would play better to their audiences and voters back home. Uh, and we should remember that it's easier politically for countries like the US and the UK to deal with this threat in the Red Sea than it is for regional allies like Saudi Arabia, like Egypt, who are, of course, also directly impacted and right there. The reason for that is that these regional powers do not want to look like they're siding with Israel. That doesn't look good for their populations. And of course, Saudi also doesn't want to antagonize the Houthis further at a time when it wishes to exit the Yemen war. Dr. Elizabeth Kendall, thank you very much for this important input. You're welcome.